everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, and I'm here for about an hour. And I typically work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way uh, and ask you questions and just join in and chit chat. Uh, so today is a new week. So we have a new project that we are starting here. We are going to stitch the mandala love pattern. So this is our embroidery of the month. Uh, it is still available just for this month as a pattern. So I put a link to that below for you guys. It's in reverse right now, but it has little um, love. It says love over and over again there. So we are going to be starting to stitch this tonight. Uh, I know that some of you were uh, able to get our bundle for this. That sold out pretty quick and our reorders sold out uh, pretty quickly as well. But that came with the uh, stick and stitch sheet and a tea towel and the thread. Uh, to, to work on this project. So uh, I'm going to use that. Uh, you can also print out the design from the pattern and trace it onto your tea towel or a piece of fabric as well. Uh, I'm going to have the digital pattern here to work from so I can see the stitching. If you did order the bundle, just so you guys know, uh, if, you, if you missed it, the bundle has the pattern with it. You don't need to buy the pattern extra. So check your emails. You should have the digital version of the pattern as well if you bought the bundle. Uh, so that, that will be in your email and make sure to check spam if it's there. Uh, if you've ordered recently, you'll notice that we have a new shipping area and uh, it should be a lot easier. Your email, your uh, pattern will be right in the your receipt email. So it should be easier to find uh, so thanks you guys. I'm going to flip you around. We'll get going here. Oh, and a reminder, our koala fundraiser is still going on. I talked with my mom this weekend. We're starting to plan oh, what we're going to do for the auction quilt of all our little koalas. Uh, so we are going to have that stitch along this Saturday at 4 p.m. Central Time. So I will be talking about that this week too and just keeping you guys up to date on that if you did want to make a koala embroidery to send to me to be turned into a quilt that we will auction. So thank you guys. I'm going to flip you around. Thank you for joining me. All right. So there's my iPad. I got the pattern up. Oh, Sylvia, your first granny square is done. I am so happy for you. So we will be starting that project, the granny square quilt project, back up at the beginning of February. So, all right, I have the file downloaded right here. Oh, man, it looks like, okay, good. <laughs> I thought we froze there for a sec. But, uh, so here is the PDF pattern. I just have it. It, it. Right now, it'll open in a web page like this, and then from here, you can download it. Um, you know, if I click that, it'll, it'll, uh, download on the iPad, but I'm just going to leave it open on the website here. What I really want to see is, uh, the stitch chart right here. So this shows the colors and I have the colors, uh, from the kit right here. And, uh, um, it'll tell me what stitches I need to do. So we got the chain stitch for this thick Thick lines here, lazy daisy. There's a whole bunch of stitches in this one. This is a little bit more uh, in depth than a lot of my patterns. It'll take a little bit longer, but I think it's gonna be really, really fun. So tonight I wanna get my, uh, uh, my stick and stitch piece onto my tea towel. I'm gonna press my tea towel uh, quickly here. And I wanna start with this chain stitch, which is this big fat blue line here just because I think it would be a fun way to start. I think that's a big chunk of the design. I think it'll make us feel like we got a lot done quickly. So I think I think that's uh, where I'm gonna go uh, starting tonight here. So, all right. So you can trace your design uh, and we can go over that tomorrow maybe. 
But all right, so if you do have the tea towel, uh, I'm just gonna give it a little iron first, uh, just kind of where I wanna stitch. So I'm gonna stitch mine, I don't know, it's traditional kind of like in the corner here maybe, but I think I'm gonna stitch mine like right in the center on, on the bottom. So if it's hanging over something, it can you can still see it. Um, to know what the top and the bottom is, the top has, you know, the little, the little tag on there, you know, so if you're hanging it from somewhere, then it'll still be up right down here. So I'm just going to press this little area here. That's, that's where I think we're going to go. But yeah, I think it would look, look anywhere and, or like look nice wherever on here. Yeah, this will be good. Just a quick press on the front here. Give me a nice, nice bit. Ooh, we are freezing here too again. That's for sure. I drove back from my parents today. Um, and luckily the drive was much nicer than going there. We were racing that snowstorm, that huge snowstorm. And uh, oh, it really felt like we were racing and it was not a fun drive on the way there. Uh, that's why I wasn't on online here on Friday because I was racing a storm instead, but we made it. Okay, so uh, I, first of all, I want to trim some of this excess. So what this is, this is, a, this is a product from Sulky called Stick and Stitch. And what it is, is you can print a design directly to it. Like I have here, this is printed just from uh, from that digital pattern that I had up here. I've printed it at actual size or 100% and I've cut it down already a little bit. But what it is is a sticker. So like there's a paper backing and then this side it's kind of textured but it is a sticker and you can see through it so you can actually trace a design to this as well. But we are going to stitch right through it and then, uh, um, then uh, we can wash it off when we're done. But the beauty of it is that I don't have to spend all the time tracing this, <laughs> right? I can just print it out from my printer, stick it on, and we are ready to stitch right away, which is what we all want to do, right? <laughs> so this helps me avoid a big um, part of the embroidery process, which is uh, getting the design onto your, your fabric here. It's also great if you're using a dark fabric or stitching onto something weird like felt or something uh, that you can't see through very well. Okay, so I'm going to start out by just trimming it a little bit more. I don't need all of this excess uh, stick and stitch. You can save that and use later if you want like trace a little design on there. I'm going to cut, I'm like eh, between a quarter of an inch and a half inch. I'm not being too worried about it. Oh, fun patty. Patty's ready to go. Yes. And if you guys are working on this, please share in the, share your photos in the, um, of your process in the penguin and fish crafters group. I can't wait to see. And if you want, if you uh, have a friend who wants to start stitching, uh, have them join us as well and grab, grab a pattern. All right, so I did mention I wanted this in the middle. And now that I'm looking at it, maybe I kind of want it, I don't know, up a little bit here maybe? Because I think you're right. If the bottom is being used a lot, I don't want to like grab it too much. But I don't want it so far up either. I think... I think if I'm, you know, if this is folded over the oven where my towels sit and it's folded like in thirds a little bit right in the center there would probably be good. So maybe up three, let's call it three inches or so and centered. I think that's, that may, that's maybe where I want it. So let's unfold that again. So I do want it centered. So how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to fold my towel in half here. And I'm just going to score it. So I'm just going to rub my finger across uh, just the bottom part a little bit. And that'll just kind of get my center center point here. There we go. So I can kind of see my fold a little bit. 
And the nice thing about this, this pattern, I mean, it really can go any direction. So actually, if I line up, here's a point here, and there's a point directly below it. If I line those two points up on that fold, then I should be pretty dang good centered, I think. So that's, that's good. Like right there, I think, you know, we're about three, four inches up. Uh, but obviously it's, it's not placed yet. I got to take off that paper backing. So let's do that. Ah, there we go. So here's the sticker. So let's, there's those lines. Let's go about there. I think that looks pretty good. Up a little, maybe a little lower. Oh, instinct is saying right there. So let's, let's go right there. <laughs> All right, let's, let's uh, press that down a little bit. So now it almost looks like it's part of the fabric there. Uh, it'll stick. Uh, sometimes it might pop up a little bit. So you'll have to just be aware of it. That's a, actually another reason why it's going to be good that we're going to do this whole outline uh, first, because that's going to kind of hold down our piece while we're working on it. Oh, too cold in Alabama tonight, Carol. How cold is it there? I'm curious. That uh, I think uh, we're actually warming up. It was uh, it was pretty cold over the weekend here. All right, I am throwing it into my hoop. So these are some of our new bamboo hoops. If you guys ordered that bamboo or that hoop and um, embroidery needle add-on. This is what you got right here. Uh, so you can separate the two hoops. Uh, you got the inner hoop and the outer hoop. The outer hoop has is, is cut in the middle and has that clasp. And the inner hoop is just a round uh, circle there. So I'm going to put the inner hoop underneath and I'm going to get the whole design in there. I think it's easier to do if you can get the whole design. Oh, dang, in the 20s, that is cold. That is very cold. Holy cow. <laughs> yep, put all the warms on, Carol. All right, so I'm going to just loosen this uh, closure quite a bit. Uh, just it makes the area a little bit bigger, the circle bigger. And then I'm going to go on the top. I'm going to press it right over that inner hoop with the fabric in the middle there. And that kind of captures captures the fabric. I'm gonna, if it's really loose, I'm gonna just tighten it a little bit so I can feel like some tension there. And then I'm going to just pull the fabric taut. It doesn't need to be super duper taut, but I do want it to feel like it is being kind of pulled like a drum, a drum head at like the top of a, a, a snare drum or something. Um, where there's no like big loose areas. And then I'm gonna um, tighten it a little bit more. Uh, it feels maybe like a little loose up top. You can run your finger around to kind of kind of feel. And again, this doesn't have to be, be perfect. What you don't wanna do is stretch it so much in one direction that you're pulling, um, like that you're actually stretching the fabric one way more than the other. I'm, I'm just trying to be as equal on all sides as I, as I can be. I gotta see Chad Kitty this weekend. He's he's getting pretty comfortable in the house for being an outdoor kitty. <laughs> he likes he likes stopping by the house and and being let in and then chilling chilling by the couch. All right, <laughs> but it's always nice to see him. All right, we are set up here. I'm gonna sit down and get comfortable, and uh, I'm gonna grab a needle. So I, I am just going to grab one of these embroidery needles uh, from, from the bundle here. All right. And I am going to get my floss out. So to, oh gosh, build a, a 30 in, the, in the Florida. Dang. All right. So I am uh, going to just look at this again. So I'm going to do a chain stitch for these outer bits and that is that blue color. So I'm going to get the blue and then we'll work on a chain stitch a little bit. And I have a little plan for that that I'm excited about. Um, you can wrap the hoop. So Gretchen's asking about wrapping the hoop. 
and I can show you what that looks like. Um, so oops, here's a hoop that I have wrapped and uh, I've wrapped the inner hoop just with um, some scrap fabric. I've gone around and around and around and I kind of like if I get to an end I just wrap the next piece around. And what this is doing is it's making like a nicer curve to your hoop so it's not quite um, quite such a harsh, um, you know, like kind of, it's not like there's no bevel or anything to this. And what it helps is it helps not to um, reduce creasing in your fabric. So you can do that. I mean, if you're doing a lot of embroidery or working on a really nice piece, um, it wouldn't hurt to wrap your, your hoop like this and then it'll be a, your fabric will be a little bit more protected. However, I am just doing a, a little tea towel. Um, I don't care so much about it. And what, what I am gonna do is every time I am done working on this, I am gonna take it out of the hoop. And by taking it out of the hoop, that will help reduce some of the, um, some of the creasing and stuff well. And this is a tea towel. It's gonna be, I'm gonna actually use it a lot. So if it gets a little crease, I mean, you know, one time in the wash, it will be good to go. So I'm not too worried about that. But if you are working on like a really nice piece or something with like some nicer fabric, uh, then I wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to wrap your, wrap your hoop like that. Okay, so I got a pile of this blue. I'm gonna just get about 24 inches or so uh, any more than that and it, you know then you're pulling your arm way far to stitch with it and uh, it, there's, it puts wear on the thread because every time you pull the thread through your fabric it's going to rub the thread so by keeping it smaller lengths like this about 24 inches uh, you'll reduce that rubbing. Um, all right I'm gonna stitch with three strands of floss here. Uh, that is, I can show you this example. Here's my example of it. So this is what's on the cover of the pattern. This was all done with three strands of embroidery floss. And uh, the three strands, that is just determining the width of, of the um, stitch. So <laughs> some of you guys have seen this before, our, our floss thickness guide. So here is three strands of floss versus all six, which is right here. And this is a back stitch. So you can see that all six is just like a fatter stitch than this three. And I just happen to like the three. Um, using less threads helps, um, it makes it easier to pull through the fabric as well. So that's another reason uh, for the less, but it really is however you want your design to look. Um, there should be enough thread for the three strands in, in the bundle if you got that. All right, so I'm going to snag uh, three threads. I'm going to do that by pulling them out individually here. So I'm just, I'm just kind of separating the one, one thread right there. And we're going to just pull that out while we're holding the rest. It's going to look all crazy, but it will release really quickly there. Um, so now it, it did not knot at all. I'm going to do that two more times to get my three strands. This actually is much quicker than trying to pull three strands, like trying to pull three strands on both sides and pull it. Zoop, like it goes so fast. Okay, let's put those three back together. There we go, just lining that up, running my hand through that. Oh, funny, the ice cream truck's going by. Oh, you can, Patty, for sure, two strands would be lovely. Um, uh, it'll just be just a hair thinner. But two strands is, is a really common um, number of strands that people use. It's probably actually the most common, two strands. I've just always done three um, since I was little, and I just, I'm just used to it. I kind of like it. But yeah, feel free to do the two strands. It'll just be a hair thinner, your stitches, which might make it look just a little more delicate, which is not a bad thing. Okay, I'm going to thread the needle. I do the pinching method where I, I kind of get my threads all together. 
you know, I even trimmed the end so I got a nice clean edge. There we go. Now I got a really good cut there. I'm going to squeeze them together in my thumbs like this. Just trying to get in focus here. And uh, I'm going to slowly release. And the moment I see those little blue threads there, I'm going to put the eye of my needle over the top and kind of push down. Then I'm going to continue to open my fingers and it'll, it'll push the thread up through the needle. Then you just need to grab it there. Uh, so that's the method I like. It works really good with these needles with a really big eye. Okay, so I'm going to just tie a knot in my, uh, in the back here. We are not, <laughs> however, going to use knots. We are going to have no knots on the back of our embroidery here. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And that's going to be really actually kind of nice for this project because we are stitching it on a tea towel. Uh, so I don't really want a pile of knots on the back because that's going to be seen. And uh, uh, I'm going to weave in the ends instead. And that's going to give me uh, a stronger, cleaner back anyway. So, all right, let's start. I think I'm going to start. I'm just trying to think of what would be a good place to start. I'm going to do, like, start at a point. So what I'm working on is this big swirling pointing deal that goes all the way around the whole piece. So that's going to use, we're going to use a chain stitch for that. And that's going to actually use a lot of thread. Um, so we'll, we'll get going there. I'm just trying to, I think just starting at a point is probably a good idea. Um, so we're going to start here. I think, yeah. And I'm going to use an actual, I'm going to use a chain stitch, but I'm going to do it in the reverse chain stitch way. Um, so first of all, just, I'm going to start here, go about four inches away or so from that start point, And we are going to just go stick the needle in a spot from the front to the back, about three or four inches away. And we're going to get a little knot on the front. So we're going to come back to this. This is called an away knot. And this is going to actually allow us a piece of thread that we can weave in later. So we're going to start there. And uh, I am going to come up right at this point. Okay. And I am going to do a reverse a reverse chain stitch for this. So it's it's still a chain stitch, but I'm kind of just doing it backwards. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that first while we get going here. And then once we finish this this thread, um, I'll show you uh, the other way of doing it, like the normal way of doing a chain stitch. And um, you'll see why I kind of why I think for this piece in particular, I'm going to like doing um, doing the reverse chain stitch. So what we're going to do to start off, it, it has a little bit different starting point than a normal chain stitch. I'm going to start with a tiny, tiny, tiny stitch. So I am just like two threads away um, from this stitch here, barely anything. So this is, this is the trick to do this reverse chain stitch. So I'm going to come down and then I'm going to leave this open for a moment. And I am going to come up like a normal stitch length away. So I, for the chain stitch, I'm going maybe three sixteenths of an inch, uh, between a quarter inch and uh, three sixteenths. Let's, let's make it more like a quarter inch. So there we are. That's about a quarter inch away. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to pull this till I just have one tiny little loop there. And then I'm going to put my needle in that loop. So you can see, see the loop. I'm just going to go right in there. And I'm going to pull that loop so it's right against the fabric. So I just pulled, I pulled my stitching thread right there a little bit. Um, it got all the way to the fabric there, and then, now I'm going to pull with my needle again. 
So we have that tiny, tiny, tiny little stitch that we did, and then we've run this through. Now I'm gonna put my needle back in that exact hole, the exact same hole that we started that stitch with. And I'm gonna pull all the way to the back. All right, so now you can kind of see we have this little loop like that, like a little kind of curved shape coming to a point and it goes through that little anchor point there, that little first tiny stitch. So that is how we start this reversed chain stitch. And now what we're gonna do is the rest, the rest of the chain stitch. Everything is gonna work, work this way now. So I'm gonna go about that stitch length away again, about a quarter inch or so, and, uh, or more like an eighth inch, between an eighth inch and a three sixteenth. And I'm gonna go underneath these two stitches that came before and pull through. And then I'm gonna go right back in that same hole there. And that's our first two chain stitches. It looks like a little chain, like they're connected, uh, they're looped together like a chain. So let's do another one. I'm gonna go through, pull the rest of my thread through, and then go back in that same hole. There we go. And you don't have to pull it super tight. The tighter you pull, um, it'll look more like one stitch. Um, the, the less you pull, the more of like a loop it's gonna look. And if you've done a chain stitch before, and, and I'll show you that, like I said, I'll show you a normal chain stitch when I'm, when I'm done uh, with this thread, which, which will go pretty quickly. Chain stitches uh, use a lot of thread. <laughs> but uh, I'll show you why I am liking this, especially for this piece. This piece, we have a lot of chain stitching to do, um, a lot of moving around the piece, because it's going all the way around. Um, the big thing that you'll notice once I show you the other way, and if you've done chain stitch before, is that I don't have to, uh, I have this loop of thread that can get in the way and that I have to bother around with, um, and I'm avoiding that completely with this style. And so let's, let's keep going here and I will show you, uh, the typical chain stitch. But look, look how cute it is. It's like a little sweet chain uh, of a pile of stitches hooked together. And this is actually one of my most favorite, uh, favorite stitches. I just love, 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 love the look of it. Uh, it reminds me of knitting and crochet because it, it looks just like some knit stitches. It looks like just a, like a, like a crocheted chain stitch. It's even called chain stitch, just like crochet. And it just reminds me of how much I love crochet and knitting, <laughs> as well as, as embroidery. All right, you can see I am already almost used, uh, my thread is almost used up and I've only made it like this little, little distance. So uh, chain stitch does use up quite a bit of floss, but you can see why I'm going, each stitch is like two stitches worth of, um, of floss. So like each, each stitch here is like double floss, one there and one there, right? So, and then to get to the next stitch uses up floss. So it, 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 it does use floss up, but what's really nice about it is that it's, it's so thin thick because it is like a double wide stitch. Um, double wide has got floss on both sides. So it's going to be twice as wide as all of our other stitches, which is kind of fun. So you can see I, I keep rotating my, my hand a little bit and that's just to um, be in a more comfortable stitching position. So whatever feels most comfortable, um, you don't have to be stay upright the whole time. Right, I'm going to see if I can get to this next point. That would be a really good stopping point. I don't know if I have quite enough 
floss for that, but hopefully I do. All right, I think I can get, it looks like, I mean, this, this amount of space, it looks like two stitches would do pretty well there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna divide it into two. Oh, I'm not sure, Leslie. So um, I do have, so are you talking about uh, like a, 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 a size eight, like a pearl cotton floss? Um, I'm guessing you're talking about pearl cotton. Um, here, let's just take a peek quick before I finish that last stitch. So I did, I do have some pearl. Oh, I just have pearl size five on here. I believe size eight is thinner. Um, I don't have an example of that on here, but I know size five is quite a bit thicker than, than size eight, I believe. And size five, I mean, gosh, it's almost like five strands of floss. Um, so I don't, I don't have a good example of that. Uh, but if you do have a size five, um, pearl five to compare to, uh, and you can kind of compare it to this, know that size five is about five strands. So if eight feels, you know, a hair smaller, you know, maybe it's more in, in this range up here. Um, so that would be one I should add that to it. I think I have some size eight laying around here. I should add that to the, to the thickness guide there. All right, this is gonna be my last stitch just cause I'm running out of thread already. <laughs> we didn't get very far, huh? Um, so I'm just gonna finish my stitch. I'm gonna go in that same spot there. Uh, this is a little bit different than uh, a, 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 the chain stitch in the other direction that I'm going to show you next um, because I can just stop there. I don't have to make the anchoring stitch because I did that at the beginning instead. That's our little anchor stitch. So I am going to just flip to the back. We're, we're basically done with that. I'm going to flip to the back. You can see here's our, our thread from that knot where we started and here's our um, chain stitch on the back. It actually is a very nice looking back stitch. Uh, doesn't it look like that? So uh, um, this is uh, gonna look awfully pretty on the back too. Oh, I suppose you could, Allison. So I, I have not washed this. Um, I suspect maybe it'll shrink a little bit, but I, I'm not too worried about that as far as how it'll affect embroidery, but it's not a bad idea to, to wash the towel first. Um, you can, you can do that. All right. So with what I'm left over here, uh, I got, you know, about three, four inches. I'm going to, instead of tying a knot, I'm going to weave, uh, this into the back of these stitches. So I'm going maybe about an inch or so, and I'm going to do that two more times. I want, uh, to go back and forth a total of three times because it's it's kind of that third that third time that locks it in place. So I'm gonna try and catch as many threads as I can. Going back the other way here. We want to make it difficult for this to come apart. Uh, so there, I'm pulling on that, and then again, last time. This is the third time. Uh, get as many threads as I can. Pull it through. And there, now our thread is locked in place there. It should not come out. It, you know, even if you wash it a bunch, it, it should be fine. It's actually should be more protected than tying a knot, which could kind of loosen. Um, so this, this, I can also trim the tail. I can trim really close to the edge as well. So you can see we got a nice flat, um, little woven in bit right there. This is not going to, uh, it's not gonna come out. We are not gonna catch our thread on a knot. That's what I hate. Like if you tie a knot on the back, um, you can, you might accidentally like catch when you're stitching a big loop onto that knot. We don't want that. So this helps avoid that by weaving in the ends a little bit. Oh, this is what you do with hand quilting instead of a knot. Oh, nice, Leslie. I like that. All right, so remember this guy? We are gonna now cut that guy off. So we're gonna cut the knot away. This is our away knot from the beginning. So we're gonna just toss our little knot. Then we're gonna head to the back again. And uh, where we cut away that knot, now we have another bit of thread here. So this allows us to weave in 
that end as well, so we didn't have to start with a knot. Because remember, we didn't have any other stitches to weave in at the beginning here, so uh, now we can um, not have a knot at the beginning either, which is again going to make the whole thing lay flatter. We're not going to accidentally catch our threads on stray knots on the back, and I think overall, especially since we're going to be seeing the back of this piece since it's a tea towel, uh, it'll just look cleaner. All right, that's two. I want to get the three because it's the third one that locks it in. And as many threads as I can. And there we go. So now I'll just trim off that excess there as well. Oop. Okay. So here we are so far. <laughs> Not much with all that thread, but uh, it is awfully pretty. Uh, this is going to be that nice thick line that goes all the way around. Uh, it'll also hold down our stick and stitch uh, sticker uh, a little bit as well uh, while we stitch everything else. And you know, it's funny. Typically, this wouldn't be the first thing I stitch. Sometimes I like to go on the furthest back thing and then work my way towards the front. So, for example, like this little area here is kind of behind behind this line a little bit, right? It looks like it looks like this shape is on top of that. So sometimes I'll stitch that first, all the background things first. But this was just too fun. I wanted to start with this nice big chain stitch. I just that's just what was going to make me happy. <laughs> and you know what? That's a good enough reason uh, to do that too. Oh, you always make your way not too short. I uh, do that a lot as well, Leslie and, and, and Catherine. And oh, that's annoying. Sometimes I have to take the thread off my needle and re-thread it a little bit. All right, this time I actually don't have to uh, do the away knot. I can just thread into the pieces there. But what I wanted to show you first is a, the other way to do a chain stitch. Uh, I'm not going to tie a knot or anything because I'm going to take this out and I'm going to just do like a little chain stitch up here. So remember how we started with that tiny, tiny stitch? We are not going to do that this time. Instead, I'm going to, this will be like the reverse of what we just did here. I'm going to kind of make a loop. So I have to make a loop with my whole entire thread here. And then I go back in the same hole. And before uh, I, I start pulling it through, and before I pull all the way through, I have to make my next stitch. I think I just lost my thread on my needle. Um, and then I got to pull it up through that loop. Oh, there we go. And there we go. That's our first chain stitch. So then I got to hold the thread again, make that loop. Uh, you can go down, you can actually go down and up in the same movement, but that can be a little bit difficult. Into that loop again. And pull it tight. But why I don't like this as much, especially for the mount that we have to go around, is I have to deal with this loop all the time. So my thumb is holding this loop. Uh, while I'm working on the next stitch and uh, that loop can uh, just get all twisted and stuff. So uh, this method avoids that loop uh, entirely. And, and I'll show you guys that again now. Uh, and then actually when you're done with this, you have to make that little tiny stitch right over the last stitch there. And I'm just going to pull my needle out. So there, that is like the normal way of doing a chain stitch. We just did that in reverse. We started with that tiny stitch and then we made the loops through uh, the loop that was already there, um, which made us not have to do that big dangly loop, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, give it a try both ways. Uh, I, I did it this way for years and years and years uh, until I discovered uh, that way of doing it. Um, just, I don't know, watching, watching YouTube videos or something. And you can just pull it right out like a chain stitch too. <laughs> um, and I do really, really like this reverse way of doing it. All right, 
So let's move on. I want to do another, let's see uh, how far we get with this next, um, some more chain stitches. So I just grabbed the, the rest of those three strands. We pulled out the three strands for this, and now I have that those three strands left over. That's what I'm using. All right, so I'm going to start here. This is where I left off. Uh, I don't have to do that away knot this time because I have stitches I can weave into. So I'm going to flip to the back here and I'm going to just weave into these stitches um, just like how I uh, finished the row here. So the same stitches. I'm going to just leave a hair out right there. That's three times again. So I'm grabbing as many stitches as I can. So this uses up less thread this time, you know, that big away knot, you are using thread. But once you have some stitches down, then you don't really need to do that anymore. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to trim those little threads there now. Oh, you do it different than both of those ways, Leslie Ann. Oh, I'm interested in how, how you're doing it. For sure. You'll have to uh, um, take pictures or something for the crafters group. Okay, so uh, because of the location of um, our last stitch, we are at a point here. Uh, when you reach a point on chain stitch, sometimes it's nice to anchor it down like we did at the beginning, um, you know, versus on the curve or where we just keep going into the last stitch. So I, I'm actually going to start with another anchor stitch, which is that tiny, tiny, tiny little stitch. I think it's going to just make it, uh, it's going to lock, lock the stitch in so it doesn't slide around. It can sometimes uh, slide on the points. I can show you what I mean when we get to this next point. All right, I'm going to make my first stitch about that far away. And again, we're going to go through that first little loop. I'm going to pull, I'm going to, um, well, let's pull the thread through. Hold on. There we go. And I'm going to just pull so that loop gets flat. And then I'm going to finish pulling the rest through. There we go like this. And I think I might actually go through underneath this last stitch as well. Maybe I'll just, oops, lost my here to get back in quick but might need to give a nice new cut edge oh no we're good all right so go in that same hole get a little more thread there all right that's kind of our oops sorry i hit you guys there that's our first uh next stitch you can shape it a little bit all right, there we are. And now I'm gonna just keep going around again. And really you can go through on either side from left to right or right to left. It doesn't matter. You're gonna go in that same hole though. And we're gonna just cruise down here again. So, so you can see, um, I don't have to deal with that big loop, right? I can just, stitch right through that last loop and I and it just goes a hair faster. Uh, is the black the drawing you'll be embroidering? Oh yes, so uh, I am I am stitching over all of the black here and we're just starting with this outside kind of squiggle that's going going around. This is the um, yep this is our, our mandala pattern. This is the embroidery of the month. Uh, so there's only a couple weeks left that this pattern will will be available, and actually all our bundles are gone already. Uh, but the pattern is still available till the end of the month, and um, you can either print it onto a piece of stick and stitch, sulky stick and stitch, which is what this is, or you can just trace it on. I know probably most people are just tracing tracing their design onto. Um, this case, we're I'm doing it on a tea towel, but whatever fabric um, you, can, you can trace. All right, 
one more stitch here. We're at this little corner. All right. So I want to show you quick what happens if you don't have a little anchoring stitch at these little points like what we did here and you know we have that little anchor stitch right right there your stitch can slide around like if you make a, a drastic turn with a uh, with a uh, chain stitch let's see what it looks like It might be fine here. Oh, there you can see it's starting to like kind of grab and slide up, slide up that last stitch a little bit. And I don't really like how that looks and it, that's just going to keep sliding up and sliding up. So I want to anchor that down. Actually, I think I can anchor it down right now. I'm going to just go behind the stitch there. I'm going to just go through the stitch again and put a tiny little anchor stitch. So that's just a stitch that's just on the other side of that loop. And all we're really doing is tacking that down there. So you can hardly see it, uh, that little stitch, but now our loop will, will stay stuck down there. So that's, that's nice. That will, um, just from far away, it'll be prettier. You'll have nicer, nicer points happening uh, and it won't slide around at all. Uh, up close, you can tell there's a tiny, tiny little anchor stitch there, but um, I think I think from far away, it's going to look good. All right, so let's continue. I don't think I'm going to have enough thread. Oh, I might. I was thinking I'm not going to have enough thread to get to that next point, but I might have just enough. I am going pretty fast here. Uh, you might wonder how I am coming up through, like right at the line right away. So like just coming, like I can come up right at the line without, you know, seeing the back or anything. Ooh, I got a little loose thread here. What I'm actually doing, I'll show you here. I am, a, I am sliding the needle on the back. I'm kind of guessing where I'm at, but then I'm sliding the needle on the back. You can kind of see where that point is right there. I'm sliding it to where it looks like it should go and then poking it through. So I'm just kind of doing that rather, rather quickly. I'm guessing and then kind of dragging to the right spot uh, before, before poking through. Uh, I think I can get three more stitches here. So I'm just doing that little drag. And if it's not in the right spot, I'll just pull it out and do it again. But I'm not just magically guessing and going in the exact spot. I, I do that little drag where I can see, see my needle there and poking it up through. And sometimes it takes a few little shots there. Oh yeah, I wouldn't worry about washing and the embroidery coming apart or anything, especially since we are weaving in the ends like this, that'll help make it secure. Uh, I, I do have an embroidery that I've washed a bunch of times. I should, I'll show you guys it. Um, I'll take a photo of it tomorrow and it looks totally fine still. It's been washed with like super heavy, heavy items. Um, and, and, it, and it looks fine. All right, so here's that last stitch. I, I still have enough for a couple more stitches. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start up this next little uh, loop down here. And remember, I, I'm, gonna, I'm at a point now, so I'm gonna do that anchor stitch again, but I'll show you, I'll show you it's sliding again. So here, if I pull too tight, or even if I don't, this is gonna wanna constantly be sliding sliding down that last stitch. So let's add that anchor point. I'm going to come up right there and let's just actually, let's just go through that bit again, loosen it up a hair and just tack it down on the other side. There we go. Nice, nice point. 
All right, I think I could get maybe two more stitches out of here. Yeah, let's do two. I want to leave enough floss to weave in my end. And you do want to go like those three times back and forth. You guys, I think, you know, this is a better start than I thought I was going to get on, on this today. Oh, can I get one more stitch? We're going to try for one more stitch. Gambling now. But yeah, so, you know, this is, we are only going to be working on this for this week. I might, maybe I'll like do a little bit on some weekend or something to finish it up. But, uh, you know, we're going to get as far as we can on it. I do want to try and finish this outside edge, but then maybe we'll do like a little bit of every other thing. So, you know, we have this cute heart. Um, we'll do some lazy daisy stitches so you can see what, how to do lazy daisy stitches. We'll stitch in some of these loves, uh, just because it would be fun to get a few of those. Um, we'll do some French knots. So maybe we just finish like a little area, uh, cause I, we are only going to be working on this. Oh, I'm going to go for one more. Um, we're only going to be working on this this week, uh, before we start our next project. So we're, we're splitting up projects by week and Typically, we would be done with one of the embroidery of the months in a week, but this one, yeah, this one's a bit more intense than um, than the typical my typical embroidery. Uh, so this this one might just take a hair longer. So, but I'll make sure that we do a little bit of everything. I do want to get around this um, this uh, bit here, like what we're doing. But again, if that's taking too long, I'll stop and we'll work on. A little little area other area so so you guys can see how the whole thing is stitched all right i'm gonna weave in the ends i'd at least like to put in one more day on these chain stitches though to see how far we can get tomorrow we'll just cruise through get them cranked out i think this uh kind of reverse way of doing the chain stitch will maybe go quick oh leslie you've done three koalas so far okay you guys i i did um I'll post it again, like information, but if you want to donate a, uh, one of your koala embroideries to the koala quilt that we're going to make to auction off, um, did I go three times already? One, two, three. Yeah, that was three. Uh, I would love to get your, your koala in, in the quilt and you can send as many as you want and they can be different colors, they can be on different color fabric, whatever you like, we will make it work in a quilt. My mom and I are gonna make it together and hopefully film some stuff and, and show you guys and stuff too. So um, there, I did send an email about with uh, like answering a bunch of questions and where to send it, but I will, I'll reiterate some of that during, during this week. And our stitch along is going to be, um, going to be this weekend on, on Saturday here. But for tonight, we are working on this and I think we got a pretty good chunk done. We actually almost have one of these like repeats done and there's just like four. So I think, I think tomorrow we could probably at least get to down here cause we'll go, we'll go pretty fast. We'll just steam through it and, and see how it goes. And maybe we'll go even a little longer just to get uh, this done. Cause I, I love, this is my, going to be my favorite part for sure. This nice chain stitch. And uh, then we'll make sure that we get some of these other bits. And again, here is the pattern. Uh, this is the PDF pattern. I have it open on my computer here, um, you know, shrunk down. Uh, it's just going the width of the fabric there, but ugh, look how cute it is. I think it's going to be fun stitching like some of these hidden words and stuff. But there we go. So that's all the colors. The part that we're working on right now, again, is this kind of blue chain that goes through the whole the whole thing there's a lot of different stitches we'll be sure to do all of them all of them here for sure all right you guys i'm gonna flip you around and we'll see how this goes hello all right so the due date for sending the koalas i would love if you could send them to me by february 7th so that will give you about a week uh, after, oh, it'll actually, it'll give you two weeks. It'll give you two weeks after we do the stitch along to send me the pattern. So you'll have two weeks to finish it. 
and, and send it to me. So if you could have it in the mail by the 7th, I think that's what I wrote in the email, have it in the mail by the 7th, then uh, um, I think we'll be good. So we'll make it mid-February and try and get the auction up in mid-February as well. Um, so all right, you guys, here we are so far. Ooh, it's hard to see. It's similar to that black color. But here's, here's the back as well. This is the color that it's going to end up being. So our back is looking awfully pretty so far, too. It's going to be nice and clean. But all right, we are going to start really cruising on that. And I am actually going to take it out of the hoop. Uh, because that will help reduce creasing if I just let it sit here for a while. Um, overnight, I don't think we'll really have that big of a problem, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, if I would, if we don't finish this by the end of the week, I will for sure take it out of the hoop uh, if it's going to sit for a while um, before we get it done. All right, you guys, thank you again. Uh, post how you're doing in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. I can't, can't wait to see what you guys are working on. It's fun to see these little koalas start popping up as well. Uh, so have a great evening, and I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies if you'd like to watch and again, see how to do those two different ways to do the chain stitch again, uh, for sure. That reverse chain stitch, I think, is going to be nice for, uh, for doing this one. So awesome. Have a great evening, and good night.